own fall in the Smolny Institute in Petrograd, now St. Petersburg. He rises above a crowd of revolutionary workers and soldiers, directing his hand towards them. The gesture known since the time of the Roman emperors, which in this case represents a symbolic transfer of power from the leader to the people. Behind Lenin's back are the figures of his comrades. Felix Zerczynski, Yakov Sverdlov, and of course, Joseph Stalin. In 1949, this version of the painting was presented to the Mao Zedong during his two-month visit to Moscow, and now the whereabouts of this painting are unknown. In 1955, Vladimir Serov made the first replica of the picture. However, at the request of Nikita Khrushchev, Instead of reproducing the figures of the associates behind Lenin's back, he presented unknown soldiers. Just a year later, Nikita Khrushchev made a speech at the 20th Congress of the Soviet Communist Party, in which he exposed the personality cult of Joseph Stalin. Vladimir Yasir made another version of the painting in 1962 at the request of the state Tretyakov Gallery. And, as usual, the artist reproduced the composition without the associates. Many works of Soviet art serve the purpose of state propaganda. Vladimir Lenin was the central image of Soviet propaganda turned into an idol. His images were everywhere. The central street of any Soviet city was called Lenin Street. And there was, of course, a monument to Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. Some of the monuments had the same posture and gesture as in the painting by Vladimir Serov. Thus, in the 60s, in the mass Soviet propaganda, the figure of Lenin was completely torn away from the historical context and turned into an abstraction. Banksy uses it as an abstract image and reinterprets the outstretched arm of a leader as a means for balance during skating. It seems that Lenin can no longer stand firmly on its feet, since it does not have mass support. In his time, Andy Warhol was shocked by a documentary paragraph of Lenin. He first saw him as a regular person, not an idol. Based on the photograph, he later created his own image of Lenin designed as an icon. As for Banksy, he was surprised that the figure of Lenin no longer seemed to mean anything. Lenin, divorced from Soviet propaganda as well as by depreciated by it, was no longer perceived as the leader of the world proletariat or an historical figure whose influence on the history of the 20th century can hardly be overestimated. From a leader, he turns into a character of a street subculture. In late capitalism, heroes of a revolution and symbols of protest also become the object of total branding and get commercialized into heroes of mass culture. The hero of the Cuban Revolution, Ernesto Che Guevara, met the same fate by becoming a pop culture figure. Banksy works with the Soviet-era Stalinist Empire and at the same time reinterprets Western protest culture from the 1968 youth revolutions in Europe, as well as the punk culture of the 1970s. In each case, he asks the following question, what is left of the protest? And is it possible to restore all these images to their original strength and meaning? Or are they already completely absorbed by the advertisement and entertainment industry? This is similar to how images and slogans of punk culture, which once caused widespread rejection, come to lie on the shelves of every tourist shop in London. 